Well, our next guest is an entrepreneur and a motivational speaker, but unlike most, he doesn't want you to focus on yourself. In fact, he's urging you to do the opposite. He says it's not all about you, and it's time to get over yourselves. I love you, but I love me more. And I've been in a relationship with myself for 49 years, and that's the one I need to work on. Me, 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 we live in a world of self-obsession. We're desperately searching for inner happiness. The best job, the most success. Show you the money. Let that show you, show me the money. The perfect figure. Or having a lot of fun and being really, really good looking. Australian entrepreneur Andrew Griffiths is here to change our attitude. He's the author of The Me Myth, a book that tells us to get over ourselves. And in doing so, we can achieve greater success than ever before. Andrew Griffiths, we salute you. You it joins us now from Cairns. Good morning to you. Now, why, why do you think the world has become so self-obsessed? Uh, well, firstly, I salute you and Larry back. Um, <laughs> I think the world's become so self-obsessed because we're, we're bombarded with so many messages as telling us how to think about everything, how to act, what to buy, who to be with, who to not be with, all of these things. This bombardment of information actually leads to a sense of what I call over-analysis paralysis. And that <laughs> means that we, we don't have anything else to do except focus on ourselves. So that's where we're at today, me-centric. Yeah, what are three ways people can change their narcissistic uh, ways, their behaviour? <laughs> well, first and foremost, Larry, I think we need to let go of the past. Too many of us are still living based on things that happened to us 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Let go of them, for goodness sake, and just get on with life. Secondly, I think we need to learn the art of empathy. Rather than thinking it's all about me all the time, actually learn every day in every interaction to put yourself in the shoes of the people that you're actually engaging with and, and look at life from their perspective. Amazing things happen when you do that. And third, and I think probably the most important, is to stop analysing every little detail and actually get on with living. What great advice. Andrew, though, we have to say, you know, we're told all the time you've got to be confident, you've, you've got to have a little bit of ego. Isn't that good for us? Well, I think it actually is, and I think that, that it is great to have some, a sense of ego and self-esteem that comes with that. However, it's not good to be a me monster and an ego monster, and I think that that is what, what is happening in the world these days because of this me-centricity. I'm so glad that we work in television because we don't get a lot of that going on in our business, so we're, we're kind of free of that. I, so basically sitting here, we don't understand what hey, you're talking about. Hey, I made you muffins today. I know. Oh, get over yourself. <laughs> it's a foreign it's language. It's all about my muffins. <laughs> Sorry. Me, um, me, me. Hey, what if you're a perfectionist? What if you want to make the perfect muffin? Um, <laughs> now, what if you're a perfectionist? No, no, no. What if you're a perfectionist? You kind of want to get it right all the time. Uh, how can that be treated? Well, lots and lots of people do struggle with that, and it's a really big issue. You know, it's the battle for perfection I talk about in the me myth. And I think that if you are one of those people, and I'm sure lots of people watching are, there's times you've just got to say that, look, close enough is good enough. It doesn't always have to be perfect. I think you also need to perhaps believe the fact that people love you for who you are, not what you do. And so many of us are tied into, our self-esteem is so closely tied into what we achieve in life. And uh, that's a battle, that's a real battle because you've got to keep achieving to think that people love you. And third, I think we've got to learn to let go again in here and create a little bit of room for serendipity and spontaneity. I think when you're in those zones, that's when the most amazing things happen in life. If, it's so, if you live a life that's so rigid and so aspiring for perfection, there's no room for those kind of things and, and life becomes very predictable and boring. And so I guess flowing off from that, in your book you urge people to, to get back in touch with Mother Nature, um, but you're not asking us to become hippies, right? <laughs> I think everyone should chain themselves to a tree every once in a while and find that inner passion, to be honest, <laughs> Sam. I, I, I live in one of the most beautiful parts of the world, Cairns, North Queensland, and the reason I do is because nature is all around us. You might not think so looking behind me, but it really, <laughs> really is. And nature is incredibly grounding. We live in a world with so much information being thrown at us. We're all per permanently semi out of control. Spend half an hour walking through a rainforest or in a park or walking a dog or, or sitting on a beach. And that grounding and connection makes you feel that life is real rather than this, this, this barely controlled mayhem that we're so used to. All right, Andrew, in your self-help book, you partly blame self-help books out there for all of this. So we thank you for giving us lots to think about <laughs> no, this morning. We this, appreciate that. 
<laughs> this is not oh, a you're self-talk. most welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, you. Right. Good to chat. Have a good Sunday. See you later.